Blue Jays trying to finish off this big series with the Tampa Bay Rays on a high note. Driven to left field. Diaz has launched one into the seats for a three run homer. Shane McClanahan on the mound. He's just coming off the IL. Strike three called. Boy, a hundred right on the outside corner. Shane McClanahan bringing it. And a fly ball to left field and deep, and it will go. That makes it five to nothing, Rays. Tough day here at the ballpark for the Blue Jays. The Rays shut out the Blue Jays 11 to nothing. Not exactly the finale they wanted. Ben Nicholson Smith, Jesse Rubinoff, and Tim McAuliffe in studio here. So the Jays drop the finale to the race. Still take three out of five in the series. Kevin Gosman, not his best stuff this afternoon. Here's John Schneider with his thoughts on Gosman's outing. Yeah, I thought he had really good stuff. You know, Velo was there, stuff was there. Um, tough inning. Um, call that could have went either way, probably to Paredes and then Homer, but. Um, after that, he settled in, probably just made a couple mistakes and gave us seven. You know, it's what good pitchers do. Um, and it was really just a couple of mistakes. But overall, man, he was, I thought he was really good today. Probably happens every night in every game where there's a close call that may swing the momentum one way or another. And when you're facing a really tough starter in McClanahan, um, you know, and you're down four, it's tough. So uh, you can't really bitch and complain about it too much it's going to happen um i thought the way kevin responded was great gave him a few innings after that tough second inning where the mariners went up for nothing but because of it ben jays fall into a virtual tie with the mariners three teams now separated by just a half game in the wild card do you know where you would like the jays <laughs> to finish up in that wild card because i'm not all that sure it has to be one right i mean does it have to be one i, I think it does I think it does. Can we look at the way this breaks down before you say that? Don't you want, and listen, the Guardians lost today mm -hmm. to the White Sox, and it's now a three-game spread. If that's the White Sox in that spot, I might agree with you, but I think I'd rather whoever wins the Central over Seattle, and I know you're talking home field. Well, exactly. Yeah, and, okay. so, and, and so I think three is preferable to two. Because if you're going to be on the road anyways, you right. might as well be facing the central team, right. which is where the, the third wild card would go. But I think, you know, not only would it mean that your home field, if you are that number one seed, but it also means you're playing well going into the into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You have a little bit of momentum. You know, finishing second is kind of that murky middle. But to me, number one is, is where you want to be. Dare I say even the second round matchup against the Yankees is better than a matchup with the Astros. I might double yeah. down on this yeah. as you get to the <laughs> ALDS. And, and I think that's probably fair, but ultimately you're going to have to be good teams. Right. So you can't, I don't think that you can try to shy away from, okay, like we want to find the Yankees or we want to try to finesse they, our and, way And through. no team would ever say that, no, right? No they, one they would, would ever admit it. that they were trying to do that. But at a certain point, you just have to out-talent teams. You have to outplay teams. You mm -hmm. can't finesse your way through by finding the right matchups. And so I think home field is a great starting point, And I think if the Jays can get that, take it. But that's what we try and do on shows like this. Of course. <laughs> Finesse of course. things, have the conversation, who do you want? And have the conversation about what it would take to get Vladimir Guerrero Jr. under contract after some interesting comments. I uh, had already mentioned it to Hazel May earlier in the yep. year, but Hector Gomez with the tweet kind of restarts the fire here on Vladimir Guerrero Jr. going forward. Jesse, what was the feedback like? So we asked that what contract would you offer Vladdy this offseason, and we had a couple good responses that we showed in the first block, but uh, DuPont says, line up a package with Manoa and Bichette, all the same annual, annual salary and term, let's say $35 million per for eight years. Put on the uh, GM hat there. Does that, do you, does that actually work out, Ben? No, because, and I love the concept, I love the concept, but no, because... Manoa is behind the other two in, in free agency. And I think Vlad and Bo, too, they just play different positions. They're different ages. So I, it doesn't work. Right. It's not all positive. Chris writes in and says, what would you pay a ground ball machine? Okay. <laughs> what would you say if we paid a ground ball machine who has the most hard hit balls in Major League Baseball? Like, I think this Vladdy hate right now is going a little too far. Like, other major leaguers laugh at how hard he hits the ball. It's unbelievable. There was one ball in the double header. I want to say it was the night game. Just, just a laser down the third baseline. I think it was 108. And that's nothing for Vladdy. I mean, he's just accustomed to crushing the baseball. He does it so well. And I think, 
I think there's more to come from, from what we've seen. And Bo Bichette and his hot streak should remind us that we can't write these guys off. <laughs> I, I thought... I thought that all the people ripping Bo a month ago would be taught the lesson, but it feels like the same people who were ripping Bo a month ago are the ones that are ripping Vladimir Guerrero Jr. right now. Of all the people that you'd want to bet on, right, a 23-year-old who's done what he's done in the major leagues, who's doing what he's doing, I mean, I, I think there's a great chance that he's going to be an elite hitter on any given day that he's on the field. Uh, heading into today, he had 241 hard hit balls. That's 95 plus mile an hour exit velos. Most in Major League Baseball. Second, Jose Abreu with 226. Jesse, any more people that want to weigh in on yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. That's I, that, I just off your point there. That has to contribute to why he's so frustrated because he's he is hitting the ball hard. He's still he's hitting just the not ball getting the results right. that he's used to. Right. Uh, similar to what Ben just said, uh, Dooley writes in and says, "Dude is a beast. It's still under 24 years of age. Too many fans that don't understand that most players are still in the minors at this age, and he has four seasons under his belt already. So Dooley would give him 10 years, 35 million dollars a year. Sorry. Yes, that's right." 10 years, $35 million. That actually is a pretty fair estimate. There you go. There we go. <laughs> there you go. So hey, we finish it with Dooley? <laughs> yeah. it is. No, no, there's more. Two more. <laughs> Two more. Uh, Mark says, I'd sign him this year after a, quote, down season, which I think is sound management at uh -huh. the end of the day. Uh -huh. uh, and final one, a move says $1 million for 99 years. Trust the Bobby Bonilla route or something like it. So that's it. Um, if he were able to go to free agency with the Arab years. Like, just fantasy world, we're not in the real world. Like, what's the number that you think it is? Is it 350 over 10 years? Is that where we're kind of in and around? Well, so he has the three Arab years, and then, you know, at that point, free agency is going to be super expensive for him. Um, yeah, like, I think to get his attention, like, the Tatis deal that Tatis signed when he was less experienced than Vladdy is now was 340. So yeah. I, don't, I don't see how you can realistically go to Vladdy with a lot less than that. Right. I think it has to be more. I feel like uh, 100, by the way, is also going to open the floodgates. I know we talked about that, Jesse and I, a yeah. couple days ago. I feel like he was kind of pressing for 100, and Vladdy's best when he's relaxed. Yeah. I read a lot about flow state. I think I've got <laughs> to send a little flow state to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Very he nice. needs to hit the sporting flow state. Because when he's happy, when he's loose... He crushes, and right now you can see a little frustration in his game. All right, Benny, let's uh, let's zoom out a little bit here. What are the concerns turning down the stretch in your mind, and then if they get there into the playoffs? I, I don't know if this is a question or a concern. I think he's Jose Barrios is probably making it less of a concern, more of a question, because he's pitching reasonably well right now. But that, to me, is one of the big variables as the Jays move forward. If there's one thing that could go right for this team mm -hmm. in the course of the next few weeks. I think it's Barrios continuing to do what he's been doing and proving to the Blue Jays that he is, in fact, a number two or three starter in the major leagues. And that's been an open question all year. I don't think we've answered it. That would be best case scenario is if he can push that further in the direction of, yes, he is a reliable arm for uh -huh. you in the playoffs. I'm, uh, I'm smiling here because I'm pondering if you end up in the postseason who are your first three starters? Well, I think the first two are apparent. I think Manoa, Manoa is one, if you Gossman, can do it. Gossman, two. And Strip. Stripling. Right now, yeah. Yeah. He's been a lot better than Jose Barrios. So, so what do they do with Ross Stripling, who is a free agent at the end of this year? About halfway through the year, we chuckled and said, maybe they give him a qualifying offer. Like, th this is now a legitimate... Uh, situation where we could see Ross Stripling and a qualifying offer. Yeah, I mean, much like Stephen Matz last year, we can at least have that conversation. And Stripling has put himself in a great spot. He's been so good for this team. Obviously, we saw it last night. We've seen it all year, the consistency, the change-up. He's legitimately good, and he will get paid for that. The Jays will need starting pitching. That's arguably going to be their biggest off-season need. So Stripling, when he does hit free agency, and I, I don't think the Jays will qualify him, but when he does hit free agency, the Jays will pursue him. They'll definitely have interest in bringing him back, but Stripling will have interest from elsewhere, right? Yeah, like he's going I to be in I can feel that big butt coming. Like, yeah, I was uh, walking from a mile away, the big butt. <laughs> but there's going right. to be plenty of interest. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. There will be. And so, you know, I, I think 
you know, he's he's put himself in an amazing position. But right now, if they needed a must-win game and Gosman and Manoa had just thrown, I think you go to Stripling over Barrios. Uh, we mentioned this a couple of times today, and, and I feel like an uh, understated kind of very classy move from Kevin Cash on this uh, Roberto Clemente day. He fields an all Latin American lineup, and you look down from you know Venezuela, the Dominican Republic, and Mexico and beyond. Uh, here's the skipper of the Rays about what this day meant to him and his team. It's pretty cool. I, I didn't know that till uh, halfway through the game. Somebody had mentioned it to me, but it's very surprising at the same, uh, same point just because of the Latino community, the impact they've had on Major League Baseball for so many years, and extremely fitting to be on Roberto Clemente Day. So he didn't know. That's cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> Steven, he didn't know. <laughs> I'm giving him all the credit in the world, and he says he's shocked to have been the fact that he was the first. I get, I mean, listen. He had to know that he was start- no. He had to know that he was starting an all Latin lineup on Roberto Clemente Day, but didn't know that it was the first time ever. Right, or maybe not. I mean, it's a talented group. Like there were no. It's not like he was pushing someone undeserving into the lineup. Everything came up roses for the Rays today. <laughs> Always does. They win eleven nothing, and Kevin Cash doesn't even know, but he sets uh, he sets history on Roberto Clemente Day. Uh, thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate you doing this. My pleasure. Uh, ben Nicholson-Smith zoomed his way up from the Rogers Center to be on this show. Uh, we appreciate him. We appreciate Jamie and Joe. And we appreciate your feedback with Jesse mm-hmm. Rubin. More Jay's Talk is on the way as we go to 7.30 Eastern time. That's right. A little bonus. Tim and friends as we take you to the Reds and the Cardinals. And speaking of Latin American players, Albert Pujols at 6.97 plus. A look back at Roger Federer's amazing career as he officially calls it quits. And also coming up, it is NHL Media Days, plural, in Vegas. Earlier today, we caught up with the Sens captain, Brady Kachuk, to discuss the excitement in Ottawa. We'll bring you that next. Thanks, Benny.